On a previous video, I got a request to show how to animate a graph, so I figured I'd be doing that today. In Illustrator, I've designed two different types of graphs just to show you some different examples. First one is just a regular line graph, and this is just made of the pen tool for the actual graph thing itself, and then just also the pen tool for the rest of it. And then the same with this, but instead of the pen tool, I just used the rectangle tool and just drew rectangles and distributed them evenly. I'm just keeping it black for now, just because it's easier to see on this canvas. We can always change the colors inside of off that fix. I'm just going to select it all and I'm going to use Overlord. If you don't have that plugin, I highly recommend it. I talked about why in my must have plugins video, but uh, if not, there's always ways to do it without using Overlord. So in After Effects, I already have a little composition set up, nothing too crazy really. Um, it's just a background and some texture to it and on the background I have a gradient wrap as well. So first thing I'm going to do is once I've dragged it in I am just going to go with motion tools and extract everything from it and I'm just going to change the stroke color to white. There's a couple of things I want to animate to it. The first thing is animating the x and y axis and the second thing will be the graph line itself. Now this animation is as simple as it gets and it's techniques we've covered before but essentially what you want to do is add a trim path. So open up, click contents, and then go to trim paths. Once we have the trim paths open, we want to go to about one second, keyframe the end, and go back and put that at zero. As you can see, the way I drew the axes in Illustrator is the opposite of what, how we want to animate it. So we can just Command Z that or Control Z, and then we're just going to keyframe the start instead, go back to the beginning and set that to 100. And now we have a line animating upwards. Now, the good thing about this is we can keyframe it and paste it to our X axis. And I'm just gonna hit U twice to bring that up. Now, in this case, it's the opposite. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna go to one second, delete both keyframes, keyframe the end instead, go to the beginning and set that to zero. So as you can see, the way you want to animate the trim pass depends on how you drew the shape in Illustrator. So now if we play this back, we have just the two lines animating out something super simple. I do want to add a little bit of more flair. So I want the arrows to kind of follow the lines as they come up. So if we keyframe both the arrows positions right at the end, and then I'm just going to go back and for this first one, so the x-axis, we are going to scoot it to the beginning. And this can be a bit hard to do. You can hit command R to bring up the rulers. Now that we've finished the animation, we can drag this ruler out of our view. And I'm just going to click command R again to remove it. And then playing it back, we have this super simple little animation. It's a bit stale because all the keyframes are linear. So what you can do is, once again, referring back to my must-have plugins, you can use Flow to ease your keyframes super easily. I, of course, love Sexy Speed. It's just my go-to just because it has a nice flow to it. And that's pretty much it for a little animation. And you can always, of course, go in. You can change the easing of it. Let's say you want to start it real slow and then pick up a lot of speed right at the end. Just move them all the way back there. And it really isn't much harder than that. So playing it back, you have this. I do prefer sexy speed in most cases because it is, well, sexy. With the base of our graph being animated, now all we need to do is animate the curve itself. And again, we're going to do this with a trim pass as well. So I'm just going to take this end one because I remember how I drew it. I'm going to copy it and then I'm just going to paste it onto the graph itself. And as you can see, we have that animated. It looks pretty cool coming out like this. And this is all kind of per personal preference, but I like to scoot it up just a tiny bit just so it animates in just a little bit later than everything else, just so you kind of get a sense of the curve beforehand. Now, this is a little bit fast for me, the curve itself, the way it goes. So I'm just gonna ease this out a little bit by going into my graph editor and just slow it down ever so slightly. You know, just kind of messing around until I get a result that I really like. And one way I like to stylize it is by using turbulent displays. So if I just put all these together in a pre-comp and I'm gonna name this graph one, I'm gonna add a turbulent displace using FX console. And then the amount, I'm just gonna leave at 10 for now. And the size, I'm gonna put down to two. So that just kind of gives us a little bit of a rougher look. And if you increase the size, you get a more rougher look. So kind of just like a pencil edge, kind of scribble effect, which just looks pretty nice. And then you can, of course, animate this. I like to go and animate it using the random seed just cause I feel like it looks a little bit nicer than the evolution because the evolution tends to look very smooth and digital. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna alt click the random seed and in here I'm just gonna do wiggle 200 comma 10 and we can also add a posterize time before that just to get a little more of a stylized look and we have something that looks kind of like this. So as you can see just 
ever so slightly animates the little curves. I do like to add another instance of turbulent displace and decrease the amount to let's say eight and the size to eight as well. And then I'm just gonna open up the turbulent displace and change the expression that we've added to it. I'm just gonna decrease it a little bit. So it's let's say two instead. And that's just gonna give us a nice little even more randomized look. Nothing too complex when it comes to this. We can of course go in and stylize it however we want. Let's say we want the curve to be a different color. So using this new properties panel, it's super easy. I can just go in, let's say we want it to be a light blue and let's add a deep glow to it just to make it look sexy as, and then we can go back into our graphs. Let's add a adjustment layer, add pressurized time, set that to 12 rename it to pressurized time and just like that we have a pretty cool looking curve you can of course go back in if you want a little bit of that flicker that some of you have been talking about you can go in and what i usually do is just add an expression to the exposure i add a pressurized oh, i add a pressurized time to it again and then just a wiggle since we have a an exposure slider that goes up to one and we don't want it to be too overpowering i'm just going to set the um, range that it goes between to about 0.3 just so it doesn't become too crazy because if you set it to one it'll switch one value every time so it just gets a bit too much and there we go we have a nice little graph animation now since the base for both of these is the exact same what we can do is just select these and put them into our composition i'm just drag them in it you can scale them up and let's change the color of all of these so we can see what we're doing and we're just going to do that Bada beam, that is pretty good. And then once again, using motion tools, shout out my plugins video. I really meant it when I said must have plugins. Extract all of these and boom, there we go. Now with shape layers, it can be a bit tedious to animate the scale of it to make it come up like you would with a regular um, mask because the anchor point works a bit weird. So what you can do is if we open up all of these and we open up path this will be the easiest way to go about it is by animating the path if you make a regular rectangle inside of after effects it'll be a bit different you won't have a path to begin with so if we search path you can see it just has the rectangle path so what you want to do in this case is right click it and convert to bezier path and that'll just give you a regular path where you can animate the actual points so just keeping that in mind that's why i like doing it in illustrator it just makes it a little bit easier but in our scenario we are good to go now all we got to do is i'm going to search for path and i'm going to keyframe all of them and i'm just going to move these keyframes back to about one second and then go to the beginning of our timeline and for each one i'm just going to click the path shift click one corner to deselect it and then holding shift and selecting the two I want and just go back to each one and just decreasing the size or the path until they are pretty much hidden. Now that all of our squares are hidden, we can play that back and we have something that looks kind of like this. Looks a little bit funky. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click U to bring up all my keyframes and I'm gonna hide them all again because I don't wanna see all the rest. I just wanna see the ones from my squares. So click U and first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ease them the same way that everything else just to keep that movement and have it look pretty nice so if you do this i might even scoot over the speed just a little bit to be a little bit slower in the end and bit so it comes in quick and eases out one thing i do want to do is i want to stagger these so i want the first one to come in first and then the second one so they don't all animate in at the same time just because it's a bit boring now you can do this in multiple different ways i'm going to use the motion tools and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to select all the layers i'm going to go forward a little bit just to start them at the same time as our graph and i'm just going to use the offset here i'm going to set that to five frames so every five frames it'll sequence the next layer and then i'm going to pick the way i want to sequence it and i know my first one is the one at the bottom so i'm going to select this pattern right here so this goes from the first second blah 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 you know and i'm just going to click sequence and done so playing that back we have something that looks kind of like this increase the speed of it just a little bit to make it a little bit tighter and not so long pretty simple now one thing you typically see with these type of graphs is each one has a different color so we can just pick some let's do some pastel -y colors and there we go we have a little graph we can of course take our deep glow from the previous curve we did select them all paste it on there it's a little bit hectic so what i'm going to do is i'm going to undo that paste it on one set the exposure to 0.5 and maybe the radius to 250 maybe even decrease it a little bit more to 0.3 and then we can take that and copy it to the rest see what that looks like a lot better just give us some nice little bit of color go back and play it and let's drag this underneath all the texture so we get some of that deliciousness on top of it as well and that is pretty much it for how you can animate graphs in after effects as you can see it's super simple it's 
not much more than trim offs and then just playing with the keyframing of it all. And of course it helps to add texture, lights and effects like deep glow to really make it stand out and make it visually interesting. But uh, I appreciate you guys for watching and I hope you enjoyed watching along with this tutorial and I can't wait to see what kind of graphs you guys will be making and I'll, uh, I'll see you next week. So thank you.